When drawing lens ray diagrams, we first draw a center line vertically through the lens. On the left here, we have a converging lens, and I've drawn a center line vertically through it. On the right, we have a diverging lens, and again, we're going to draw a center line vertically through the lens. The reason we do this is that when light refracts, it refracts at the boundary between the air and the lens. And then it refracts again when it leaves the lens and enters the light again. In other words, it refracts twice, one at each boundary. And that's a little complicated when we're drawing ray diagrams. So instead, we're just going to continue an incident ray straight until it hits the center line, and then we're going to have it refract. It's a simplification, but it works very well in drawing lens ray diagrams. The second thing is, each lens needs two focal points measured from the center line that we've drawn vertically through the lens. The reason we need two focal points is because lenses have two surfaces. So you can see we've put two focal points for each of the above lenses. When we draw lens ray diagrams, there are three possible rays that we can draw. We want to start our ray from the top of the object and head towards the center line of the lens, that is this vertical center line. If our first ray goes in parallel to the principal axis, the ray that emerges on the right side of the lens will be in line with the focal point. If the first ray is heading towards the focal point, when it emerges from the lens, it will emerge parallel to the principal axis. And the third rule, which is the easiest of all, is if you draw a ray from the top of the object to the very center of the lens, you simply keep going straight. It's just a straight line. Only two rays are needed to locate the image. So we mentioned three on the previous slide. Really, we only need two of them in order to locate our image. Let's define what we mean by a real and a virtual image. In a real image, the rays actually intersect. They really intersect. Real images, the rays really intersect. You can project a real image onto a screen. In a virtual image, the rays appear to intersect, but don't. We can't project it on a screen. And here, we have a camera that uses a lens to produce an inverted real image on a light-sensitive material. The eye uses two lenses, the cornea and the lens, or sometimes called the crystalline lens, to produce an inverted real image on the light-sensitive retina. It turns out that real images are always inverted. Let's go through a few of the variables that we will run into with regard to lenses, especially when we get to using equations to calculate values. P is the object distance, Q is the image distance, these are measured left to right relative to the center line of the lens. In these lessons, the object distance P will always be positive and it will always be on the left. As you might have run into with mirrors, positive cues are real images and negative cues are virtual images. However, for lenses, real images will appear on the right side of the lens and virtual images will appear on the left. H is the object height and H prime is the image height. These are measured up and down relative to the principal axis. In these lessons, the object height H will always be positive. The object will always be upright. And as with mirrors, H primes that are positive indicate upright images and H primes that are negative are inverted images. Particularly when we get to the math, you must know that converging lenses, which have a cross-section somewhat like a football, have positive focal lengths. Diverging lenses, which have a cross-section somewhat like an hourglass, have negative focal lengths. It is very important that you know that a big difference between mirror ray diagrams and lens ray diagrams is that real images with lenses appear on the right, virtual images appear on the left.